Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today is the first day of the second month of my three months of practicing Bhag. So one month has passed. I wrote a blog post on February 1st about this idea and I just... So basically the idea is to focus on Bhag drawings for three months um, and try to get make some progress. And I've made some posts on my blog on drawingthestones.com about what I've been drawing. Um, I recently made one about a sketchbook I finished and there were quite a few bugs in there. But I also wanted to make a video about some of the techniques and things that I've been, ways of practicing that I've been uh, experimenting with. So that's what this is. Um, so the basically the first thing I did after I got the book was to cut it into pieces because it's a pretty big hardcover book with lots of fluff and stuff like references. Um, yeah, most of it, I mean, most of the text in it is, is not very interesting to me. So I just got the stuff I wanted, which is all the, um, the casts um, and also yeah, hope you can you get the idea. Uh, also, these figure drawings that he made that I also like to copy. That's what all of these are. The stack. Uh, there's also a section with paintings, I think, by somebody else. But I wasn't so interested in those at the time. They're still in the book, which is in Cologne. Um, but maybe at some point I'll go back and take another look at those. But so this is so that I can just take one of these and um, unfortunately these are not quite A4 but uh, close enough so what I do if I have my A4 sketchbook uh, it's here somewhere but let's say I'll just take this one which also is an A4 this is a really annoying format I think some American format legal or something letter I don't know nine by twelve inches anyway so what I would do is I'll show you this more in a second to basically um, have the have, just have the bark on one side and then take one of these and secure it in place and then copy it like that and I the advantage is that I can just leave it in there um, and just take the sketchbook with me. So yeah, that's something I definitely recommend if you have that book, um, the Bark book. That's the first thing I did. Then the second thing was to um, just cop make larger copies of these. So this is A3, the Psyche. Um, yeah, this is for uh, drawing on my easel, which is A1. I wanted to copy these in A2 so I could have do the same thing, basically have one half with the original and then the other half would be my copy. But unfortunately, for A2, printing a sheets of A2 at my local stationery shop, they want £10 <laughs> per page. So I think what I'll do with these is to scan the original and then blow it up to A3 size because right now there's a lot of wasted space at the bottom here and there. So if I just make this the part that is that I care about fill the page, that should be I mean that'll be quite a bit larger than than the than these than the originals. I read somewhere that uh, the 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 original plates that were used at the time were much larger than than what we get in these facsimile books, um, which makes sense to me. And when we use casts at the London Fine Art Studios, they, those are much bigger. Uh, and I find that with charcoal, uh, it's tricky to draw too small. So that's something I might do tomorrow. Scanning is a uh, scanning takes a little bit of experimentation because you want to get the right 
resolution and, and dots per inch and so on. I've had some problems with that. Oh yeah, this is another example where this is A3, but almost all of this is, I mean, this isn't wasted, but I can get this from the original, right? Because this is more about how to break down the shadow shapes and so on, but I only want this, but, you know, for the entire, for the entire sheet. So that's another thing I've been doing. And then finally, this is what I call a pocket bug, which is going in the other direction. So this is an A5. Oh, so if you, and let me show this first. So this is an A5 sketchbook, and these are scaled down. Uh, just, this was kind of an unsuccessful attempt with uh, an empty cartridge, but no, still worked. Can show you one of the drawings that's in here. I recently got this, so got uh, this is the that foot and her and oh, the plane that took me back from Cologne to London. Um, so uh, what was I going? Oh yeah, so with these I did what I was talking about just now. So with this, I scanned just the relevant part, the face, and then printed it in A5. This I did at home. The quality isn't great, but I don't really care too much. It's close enough. Um, yeah, so this is nice because I can, right now while it's still cold and I wear my my coat with pockets, I can just keep it in one of the pockets, have it with me at work and so on. It's a little bit more possible than the A4 um, sketchbook. And then finally, this is something that I did as well, but yeah, I don't know if I'll do this again. Um, this is tracing paper. Um, and and basically the idea, since at home I don't have a teacher or anybody to look at my drawings and correct them. Um, and I do find that it's, it's very helpful to get a few hints or corrections at crucial stages of the drawing. Because if I get one important thing wrong in the beginning, it can be very frustrating to correct later on. You know, after you've done the block in, if you want have if one of the proportions is wrong, and in the school, at the in the classes, the teachers usually, you know, they are there and actually they do a little bit too much hand holding. I feel like, but at least I get that as well. But then at home I don't have that at all, so I thought it would be useful to, um, to do, basically after each stage um, have the possibility of just overlaying it onto the original and checking the checking the checking that everything is right um, maybe I can find <coughs> a drawing where I did this uh, oh yeah this one here so you can see that this is transparent yeah it's not so nice to draw on this paper, on this tracing paper, but another another tool in the arsenal, I guess. Uh, tool in the toolbox. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. So I've uh, only done uh, pencil drawings so far. Oh yeah, maybe one other thing to show you is uh, this. I got this book, the site size cast. Uh, this guy has a website um, called, I think it's called sitesize.com. And I stumbled upon it with some Google search and then bought this book. Uh, it's very traditionalist and very much site size is the, is the true way and so on. But, and it's quite wordy as well, but there's a lot of useful information in here too. A lot of, um, a lot of tricks or 
things to pay attention to. One idea that I got from this book, um, which I've been working hard to put into practice, is the idea to always um, draw a line and then measure to compare, rather than measuring and then trying to get it right on first try. Because, so the logic would be that if you, um, if you, if you always measure first, you don't train your brain to be able to do it without crutches. And it's better to draw, get it wrong, measure, then correct, than to just measure and probably still get it wrong. But anyway, this is something I've been thinking about because there are so many different ways of measuring. And some of my teachers are quite dogmatic when it comes to allowing some and not others. And... Um, I've, I was a little bit confused about what to, what advice to heed, and I think for me now with this, it seems like they're basically all fine as long as, for me, as long as I follow this advice and always draw first and then compare and measure whichever technique works best in that moment. Um, yeah, I'm about halfway through this book. Uh, yeah, he got me thinking about casts. Apparently, there's this company in, in Italy that makes them, and they cost. Uh, I mean, they can get really expensive, but the simple ones cost one to two hundred euros, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see. For now, bag is good. Um. So I'll be doing a little, hopefully, more b drawings this month than last month. Uh, I did mm, maybe six or seven in various stages of finish. Oh, another interesting idea from this book is that he said that he says that um, finishing is actually uh, it's better to start a few drawings and to finish one com to take it to, co to completion and render all the shadows and so on because getting the proportions right, according to him, is what takes the most practice or the most attention and that's what the beginner should focus on. I don't really know how to evaluate that advice but it makes sense to me intuitively that even if all stages are complicated um, I like the idea of breaking it down so I haven't really been too strict with uh, finishing these drawings and I've been spending a lot of time just in the beginning just trying to get the the envelope right and getting the shadow shapes, the outlines right. Um, and that was also partly inspired by him. But yeah, I think that's all I have to show. Um, so if you want to follow along, then uh, subscribe, take a look at my blog, drawingthestones.com. And thanks for watching. Bye.